So good morning, everybody, again. Um, this session is being recorded, as I explained previously. And uh, on the screen, we also have people from the University of Navarra. That includes their career services team, um, as well as uh, current students that will be participating in the career fair. Um, so let me talk to you a little bit about the career fair, right? It's going to happen on the 14th and 15th uh, of next week. And um, it will be for consulting and banking companies, like I said before, OK? Um, a, the length of the fair, like the activity of the fair, will be happening from 9 a.m. until like 9 a.m. on October 16th. So you can access and leave and come back whenever you want. Is that a, you have a question, Diego? Yeah? Uh, do these companies, uh, are any of them like working for America so they're, they're mostly European, but I'll talk about the things you can you can talk to with these companies. Okay. Um, so let me. All right. So these are the things that we're going to talk about what happens before the fair, what happens during the fair and what happens after the fair. Okay. Um, so a, a virtual career fair eventually is a simulation of a real career fair. Uh, it enables you to have a real-time interaction with the companies and the recruiters. Okay, some of these recruiters will not be alone. They will also they might also bring people from the business side in case people want to know more about a specific role. Uh, we don't know exactly uh, who they will bring, but they. Ideally, it's recruiters, and some might bring the, uh, the from the business side. Okay, like I said before, the participants in the session will be from ESS MIM and from the University of Navarra, certain faculties like economics and whatnot, and um, and their master students as well. Okay. Now let's talk about what you can do before the fair. So I sent you the pre-registration already. Um, if you pre-register, I highly suggest that you upload a picture and your CV, well, your CV, you, you, you have to. But your picture is optional, and I still suggest that you do it. Um, ideally, the more professional the picture, the better. If you're smiling, better. Uh, these are the pictures that the recruiters are going to see when you interact with them or whenever they visit your profiles. OK? Now, once you pre-registered on October 13th, a day before, you will get an email. A, it's 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 going to contain the link to the actual fair okay you don't need to create another account or register or whatever for that actual fair in in the sense that you don't need to to create a profile because it pulls the profile that you just created but that's a link that you're going to be using on october 14th and 15th and um the fair will start at 9 a.m. sharp. It will just, it, you can just log in at 9 a.m. If you're there at 8.59 p.m., you might not be able to access it, okay? Um, so what happens during the fair is that you have a main uh, access area called the pavilion. Um, well, actually you have the home screen, which is this one that you have on, the, on that Mac on the, on, the, on, the, on, the, on the slide. And then a, on the left hand side, you have a navigation panel that I will show you later. And the thing is, there's the way these fairs work is that they have a, what they call a pavilion. A pavilion is just an area where you can see all the companies that are there. And you can click on each company to visit their stands. Okay, I'm gonna dive a little deeper on that, how that works and what you will be able to see. What I do need you to understand is that by chatting with the companies, you they may not necessarily know everything about you or your profile but if you visit their stands it will be recorded for them and they can access your cv your profile your picture everything that you just created in the pre-registration they can access it just by visiting the stand is that clear okay that's why i suggest you put a picture as well so let's talk about what happens during the fair so, uh, like I said, the duration is from the 14th to the 16th, from 9 to 9. Uh, but recruiters will not be chatting uh, at, I don't know, at 2 a.m. On, on the 16th. Well, 2 a.m. on the 15th either. So, um, but that's the duration. What this means is that you can access any of the stands and, get, and look at all the information that they have uploaded um, during this time. Okay? 
You can also download information. You, you, they have the option, and some of these companies will upload videos, uh, brochures, panel, uh, sorry, banners, whatever it is, the job offers will be there. Everything that is there on each stand will be there from October 14th at 9 a.m. to October 16th at 9 a.m. Any questions on this? Okay, pretty straightforward, no? Number two, recruiters will be able to interact with you during this time depending on their availability. So a, on the left-hand side, if you just move your mouse to the left, if you click like the menu button on the top, you have a navigation panel. And on one of these buttons says the chat schedule. And it will tell you exactly, as you can see on the right uh, screen uh, on the slide, which recruiters are available for and when. For example, uh, Bain and Company, available to chat from 9 a.m. To, uh, to 13 hours, only on October 14th. So you know that this company will be active on October 14th. Their booth might remain on October 15th, but they won't be chatting on October 15th, okay? Another thing about companies is that some might, um, might only be there for one day and others might be there for two days. Also, there could be a company coming only on the 15th. So just because it's not there on the 14th, it doesn't mean that there will be new companies on the 15th, okay? So basically you have companies on the 14th, companies on the 15th, and companies on both days. Is that clear? Cool. Um, all right, so next thing. Next thing. When you're on the, on the home screen, all you have to do is scroll down to look at all the companies. It's a, it's a, it's, um, all you do is scroll down. It's a, this is like a, a, another version of the pavilion. The pavilion is where you can see all the companies. Right, is that clear? You scroll down. Okay. <laughs> All right, so what happens when it comes for talent engagement? Um, how, can you, how can the talent, which is you, engage with the company? So you can visit the stands. You know, uh, on the screen over here, you can click on any of the ones that you find interesting. Um, on the bottom, it says how many offers, like job offers they have posted on the tool. You can apply to the job offers on that tool, through this tool uh, directly or just follow whatever instructions they have. It's up to the company to upload the entire job offer or to redirect you to a link to their website, but you can apply through the tool. Okay, you don't have to worry about simplicity or you don't have to worry about um, going to their website unless they explicitly say so. Is that clear? You can apply through this tool. Cool, so on the stands, you can visit the stands and uh, you can look at the profile you can see if they have any videos, you can see, you can send them a direct mail. Um, I will talk a little bit more about how you can engage with them uh, when it comes to mails and stuff. You can chat with the recruiters. Uh, each, each chat will be either publicly or privately available. And the recruiters will say privately available for whatever in the chat schedule. Well, yeah, you have a question, Sylvan? Yeah, uh, it's, someone, it's not video chat, it's only like. So, yes. I was going to that. Um, so the chat is written, but if there's what they call in Spain, if there's feeling, if there's like a connection, a recruiter might ask you to step away from the, from the, from the, from the platform and to have a video chat because they might just want to interview you on the spot. Or interview you means like they might want to get to know you better, not like give you like a full blown interview but they wanna like see you face to face or they might wanna schedule something with you separately. But the public chat is basically where they're answering general questions. Um, on the public chat, is, it's the same window that you have um, over here on the right. Um, that's me, that's a profile that I created for a test, but uh, it's empty. But basically you, you're gonna have all the recruiters uh, and people on this chat, you can click, um, and you can just ask questions and they'll answer questions. Public chats are good because you can see what other questions people have already asked so that you don't have to repeat questions. Also, a, if you wanna engage with a recruiter specifically, you go, you, you text them privately. It's all in the chat function. You can see how to text privately or publicly, um, right? So also a, in their stance, you can view the company profiles and videos. You can also chat, you can also see who's on the chat through their stands. 
um, you can send them a direct mail. So uh, some companies will not be available for chat, uh, for a chat. So either neither publicly nor privately. So in that case, you can just send them a direct mail, which they will, uh, which address they will they will put on the on their stand, and say, hey, you know, I attended the virtual career fair. I saw these positions and everything. I'm trying to understand more about this and this and this. Now, uh, for international students. Understand that these companies are mostly European based. The recruiters are mostly European based, but they know that we have international students. That doesn't mean that they are not open to talk to international students. It just means that the people that are assisting, attending, sorry, the fair are the recruiters that are local recruiters. What can you do in this case? Diego, what can you do? Ask him for connections. Exactly. Exactly. So Diego said, ask him for connections. Exactly. Just tell him, hey, look, I'm interested in this and this and this. Do, can you connect me? Can you, uh, can you tell me who to talk to? Um, is the recruitment process the same or different? Are deadlines same or different? All these process oriented questions, you can ask them because these are HR uh, professionals. Okay. Unless you're engaging with a business professional that will tell you more about the role, will tell you more about the company and the strategy. The recruiter, as we saw in our networking session, will answer process-based questions. Do you sponsor visas? I'm an international and, in, and interested in the, in the Spanish office or in your Italian office. Do you accept applications from internationals as long as we speak the local language? Is the local language required? All these questions you can ask them for to recruiters. Any questions on this? Okay, cool. Uh, another thing you can do, Understand, understand that you can, you can apply directly to the jobs, like I said, okay? Now, what will you see specifically at each booth? You can see uh, the company profile, the mailbox to send them a direct mail, their job postings, um, the links to their social network profile, so you can follow them as well and engage with them through there. You can uh, get access to the written chats, uh, you can see any videos that they have uploaded about the company, about the role, any program that they're promoting, uh, any banners, any posters, any marketing material for them to promote themselves, you will see them on their stands. So the engagement with companies, you can access it through the stands or through the chat without accessing the stand. Does that make sense? Like you can access the chat from the home screen or you can see in their stand who's available for a chat and it click and you click on that and it takes you to the chat. I mean, it's, it's pretty intuitive. It's not, that, it's not that difficult. You just have the home screen and the stands. Okay. Now, um, like I said, uh, chatting with recruiters, private and publicly. So the difference between private and public is that public, you're one of the many people that are, charting, uh, that are already chatting with them. So before you chat privately, my advice is to check what's been said publicly so that you're not repeating. Because recruiters do think like, oh my God, I already answered this. Why am I getting this question again? Okay, so review the, the public chat with that recruiter. And if you have a question that hasn't been answered or if you wanna engage a little more, you know, as we learned in networking, gaining more insights about a specific position, about the company culture, um, asking them for, for connections to other offices, or if you're an international student, but you're super interested, what can you do? Asking them for recommendations is great, okay? And you can do that privately. Uh, writing your preferred language, uh, recruiters are bilingual. Uh, now, do understand that the recruiters attending, some of them have designated regions for recruitment. This means that uh, for example, if the recruiter from, I'm going to go crazy with an example. If the recruiter from Nicaragua is here, he's going to be looking for people wanting to go to Nicaragua. Who wants to go to Nicaragua? Mr. Byrne? Yeah? Good. Awesome. So the thing is, uh, some recruiters will be able to respond local office uh, questions only. And you can ask them, look, I'm actually interested in this other office, but I don't see anybody that's designated. What can, what can you recommend me do? Okay but you can write in your preferred language, Spanish, English, and see what the recruiter says, okay? Any questions on that? All clear? Cool. Um, on the sidebar, which is a navigation panel, you also have uh, access to the job offers. 
So you can either go to the job offers for in each stand. So you can see the, 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 the sorry, job postings. Um, and you can see the job postings that are specific to that company. Or you can just go to the left navigation panel on the home screen and see all job postings. Okay, and the application process is the same for these. Doesn't matter from where you click, you apply, it might take you to the website, it might not. That's basically it. Okay. Also, University of Navarra will have a help desk to support and respond to general inquiries. Anything that is uh, that that you can ask about, like, look, I'm having trouble accessing this, or uh, how does this how does this work, or if you're having technical issues, they are there to support. Okay. Um, you can also access them in the main pavilion. So you know where you have all the companies. Like I said, when you scroll down, you will have a, a stand that is for University of Navarra, and that's their help desk. Okay. Um, now let's talk. Any questions on what happens before, during the fair? Any questions on what we've discussed so far about what to do before? It's pretty straightforward, huh? Sabrina. If we're applying to rules like during the fair. Should we use a tailored CV or the CV that we uploaded? So the CV that you uploaded is so that recruiters, is, is the CV that recruiters will be able to access. Um, I suggest that you upload a CV that you want either, either sector to, to see that it's tailored for you. So if you're not gonna be applying to banking, upload a CV that is tailored for consulting. So that, it, you know, Otherwise, uh, if you have the option to apply with a CV that's outside of this one, then tailor it to the company if you're, if you're like, oh, I like this other banking company, I wanna apply to it, okay? Um, I don't think that that's possible though because you might just be able to apply with a CV that's on the system. But, uh, but I think you can check. Otherwise, tailor it for your ideal sector, okay? Okay, let's talk about what happens after the fair, okay? So what happens to you after the fair? So to the talent. Basically, uh, you guys will have two days, up to two days after the fair to download any material or information that you need to download. So um, a lot of this, uh, the information that they have on, on, on these stands is good for, for research. So for example, anything that you wanna write on a cover letter, anything that you saw, is good for your research. Um, also for preparing for an interview, you can, you can see, I learned in the career forum, in the virtual career fair, that there's this and this and this. So that's why it's also good to pay attention to the private chats as well. But you have up, up until two days, okay, to download any material that you wanna keep. Um, if the recruiters are interested in your profile, they'll get in touch with you directly, okay? Um, unfortunately, a, any, kind of contact that you can that you can have that you want to have with recruiters will happen based on whatever interaction that you had during the fair um, but if you want to contact them after it's basically from information that you gain during the fair so for example hey can i is it possible for me to contact you to follow up uh, after the fair what's the best way to reach out to you like these are questions that you can definitely ask okay uh, the last thing, of course, you will get a satisfaction survey uh, just so that we can, you know, improve because this year virtual career fairs are going to be way more common than in any other year. And what, I'm, what I want you to take away from this presentation is the following. So this isn't, this isn't really that different from a physical career fair. I mean, the biggest advantage is that you're not gonna be battling with people in order to get a chance to talk to the recruiter. That's the biggest advantage. Disadvantage, of course, you're not face to face. You cannot uh, you know, um, uh, read the body language. So you're gonna have to be master typists, <laughs> basically. But there's still people, okay? You're still gonna be chatting with people. And just like people, remember your networking sessions, you can ask for resources, you can ask for help, you can ask for recommendations, um, you can follow up with them, develop a relationship with them as well. You know, tell them about uh, why you're interested in, ask them about them, be interested in them, like what has kept you in this company? What attracts you? What are some, what are some of the things that you like to, to, um, 
to promote that uh, we're not seeing on your stand. You know, like these are people and they have this job and their job is to acquire talent. So, um, but they also have a, a day to day, um, you know, and they, they have things that they love to do differently. And, you know, they're, I'm sure that they're happy to communicate that. So that way you gain more insights about the company themselves. Okay. So make sure to build a relationship because in the end, you want to keep those contacts for after the fair and engage with them. Okay. So what happens to recruiters after the fair? So uh, recruiters will be able to view and export or download every profile that visited their stands. Okay. So think very carefully about your strategy. You know, if you're targeting consulting companies, but you're visiting every single stand, you might be contacted by companies that you're not really targeting. So just understand that if you visit a stand, it will be recorded for them. Okay. Um, Recruiters will have the option to reach out directly to all the candidates of interest, okay? Uh, as opposed to you. You will not have the option to reach out to them directly. They will reach out to you directly. Um, unless, like I said, during your engagement with these recruiters, you built a relate, like a connection and your guys, your guys are going to be chatting afterwards and they can connect you to other people and whatnot. Finally, they will also receive a satisfaction survey. I mean, this is pretty straightforward because we want recruiters to keep coming back to us. You know? And that's basically it. Do we have any questions? Angel. Is there a schedule of events or something like that? Or is it it's only... So, no. So the only schedule... So the question is, is there a schedule of events? The only schedule is the chat schedule. There will be no like presentations, no webcasts, no, no nothing. Um, the only way you can engage with these recruiters is through their stance and through the chats. And you can see it and you can look at the chat schedule. So you can log in, you can log out, go eat, then come back in based on the times that recruiters are available. Yeah? How do we know the chats are available and how do we know once they probably they're not going to be logged in at 3 a.m.? Like you said, how do we know what we, at what time? They, they put it on the chat schedule from like 9 to 12. From, and then again from uh, 5 to 6. And then again, it's just look at the chat schedule. It will be there. Graciela? So the only way that we're going to engage in like a Zoom or something like web is if we develop that relationship via yeah. chat. And yeah. then we would, we would direct it. Exactly. So the question is... the. So the only way that we're going to uh, engage with them outside of the platform is by first engaging through the platform, yes. So if you're chatting and they say, hey, I wanna take this outside um, because I wanna talk more about your uh, interest and see how they fit with this company, let's have a Zoom call. They can totally do that. They can totally do that. So what does that mean for your attire? Dress smart. Dress smart. Or formal, yeah. Boys, I don't think you have to wear a tie, but I would just throw in a jacket. You know, I mean, your, your guys will be, some of you will be on campus, some of you, we, of you will be at home. Mm, just throw in the jacket whenever you're, you're chatting. Girls, uh, anybody knows about female fashion that can help me? <laughs> I mean, just, just a blazer is good, a blouse, make sure that it's not uh, crazy colors, just like, Cream, white, blue, pastel, I don't know. Um, beware the makeup, okay? No bright red, no crazy earrings and stuff. The hair, whatever. Yeah, make sure it's presentable. Um, okay, but the point is be presentable and these are professional, so you might get called for a video chat, just, so just be ready. You don't lose anything by being prepared, okay? You might lose some hair gel, or a little bit of blush for the makeup, whatever you do, but that's it. You can only gain in case you get called for a video call. Okay? Any last questions? Yes, Sylvain? So when we want like, to contact someone in private, do we have like the list of, of uh, recruiters on the stands and we just like on them? Yeah, so, so the question is, how can we access people privately? So I don't understand the point to ask you. So, yeah, so Sylvain is saying, I don't understand the point of asking questions in public because some, some, it's the recruiter may need to communicate certain things 
publicly instead of uh, like the most common, uh, the frequently asked questions, you know, things about the process, like, look, deadlines are, instead of having 23 conversations, they can just post it publicly. Um, these are mostly process oriented. So that's why I always say, read the public chat first with that recruiter or with that company, and then uh, engage with them privately because it's a way to get information. You should focus on the on private conversation. Huh? Once we read like the public one, we should only focus on Yeah, that. my advice is to take it private unless, um, a, because you, like I said, you want to engage and build a relationship instead of the connection. That will only happen privately, of course. So, yeah. Yeah. Any other questions? Has anybody ever participated in a virtual career fair before? No? You have a question? No. <laughs> Has ever no? Is your first time? Yes. Yes, Sylvain. How many people? Uh, In total, so recruiters, I don't know how many, but students, uh, it should be at around maybe three hundred, four hundred. Yeah. Yeah, Borja. Uh, well, I got something to say that I don't know well, whether it will be helpful or not. But uh, I got one of my courses is uh, human resources of a big company, and she attended one of these first. And she said through the closing group chat, like I'm receiving like thousands of messages of people just telling me their lives. So she was a bit disappointed of people just telling them. So try to be like straight to the point. That's what she. Was that's, that's really good. So that's really good. So Borja is saying like. The last thing they want to do is, you know, uh, they want they don't want to hear about your your dog's name. Okay, just be to the point um, because they're getting uh, chatted at privately from other people too. That's good. That's good. That's good. Any other questions, Javier? You have a question? You sure? Yeah. Well, okay. yeah, actually. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, the, registra the registration from this morning, it was for both the fair on, Monday, on Wednesday and Thursday, which is for accounting and consulting. And the ones not interested, we should just not sign up for that one and spend on both Wednesday and Thursday working on our CDC or accounting. Yes. Accounting. Yes. Banking, banking and consulting. <laughs> accounting. All right. Um, do I have any questions from people that are virtually present? I have a... Carlota, Eli, Ana, Iker, Alain, Luis, bueno, Luis, no, Lucia, Maria Teresa. Any questions from the people that are virtually present? I guess no. Okay, so guys, this session was recorded. As you can see, it's pretty straightforward, okay? Um, there's no big science or art to the... So one of the questions is, is there a list? Where is the chat here? Uh, no. No, it's too small. Sorry, I can't see the chat. Uh, no, I know, but uh, but that's not my mouse. Is it? <laughs> Sorry. Well, I see. So, so the question is, um, will we be able to see the list of the companies? So, when you sign up, when you get the email, and you can access, you will see the companies, uh, but not before, because these companies are still signing up. Okay. So yeah, Tina, they're asking me for companies. Can it, when can they see the list of companies that are that are there? Would you like me to just send it to you right now? I can. It's sort of ugly, but I can do a cut and paste in the chat. Oh yeah, for and, sure. And, That's cool. and then they'll see it uh, when they register. Hold on one second. Let me just change one sec. Let me grab it. I'm sorry, I've got Maria on another call in front of me, and so you can hear her too. Hold on one sec. I'll mute. That's cool. Thank you, Tina. Um, but we still have companies signing up, right, Tina? Yes.
still signing up. Okay. Can I access that chat, man? Uh, sorry, Tina, no. I think the computer behind. Maybe, yeah, hold on. Nope. <laughs> There's no computer. Okay, behind. why don't we do this? Why don't I just read off the list? Because it's, it's yeah, there are 19, I'll just read it, okay? Yeah, that'd be great, that'd be great. Okay. Uh, Enfoque, Deloitte, Bain, EY, AT Kearney, Avante Asesores, KPMG, Global Praxis, Oliver Wyman, Pricewaterhouse, eh, Banca March, eh, BEEP, which is a uh, consulting company, Indra, Management Solutions, Baker Tilly, Limitada, which I think, I'm not sure if it's bank or consulting, uh, BBVA, Banco Sabadell, BNP, and there's another one that called this morning. There's gonna, probably gonna be a couple more, but we're gonna try and close it today. So I would say there's probably gonna be 20. Okay. Okay, all in the sector of banking and consulting. Okay, thank you so much, Tina. You're welcome, happy to help, Carlos. <laughs> right, <laughs> so um, this is, I've reached the end, guys. Uh, at 12.30, we have Chavela coming in to make an announcement. Okay, so please stay. Um, I'm gonna, as soon as we finish, I'm gonna go to her and help her and, and make you come. Uh, here quicker. So uh, thank you everybody that joined online. I'll share the recording with you after this. So um, that's pretty much it. <laughs> Thanks.